Hey there, let me show how to use scripting within WinDebug. Okay, so WinDebug scripting is very powerful and is generally used to simplify debugging. This is especially useful when trying to run a lot of commands in a row. Scripting with WinDebug is as simple as writing all those commands in a file and running it. Let me switch over to an instance of WinDebug, which is waiting at a breakpoint. The program being debugged is not important, it's just there so that we can run scripts against it. What you can see on the screen is an instance of WinDebug over here and a script file over here. We will write the script into this file and then run it within WinDebug. To run a script in WinDebug, it's quite simple. What we do is we put a dollar symbol and we put a left angle bracket followed by a file name. The file has to be the full path to the actual file on the hard disk. So let's go ahead and write a little sample in a file and run it. So in the tradition of programming, let's go ahead and make our first statement in the file hello world. So I will just put echo hello world and run it in WinDebug. So to run the file, what we do is we just swap the word file name to the full path of the file. The extension does not actually matter as long as it's a text file and no spaces between the left angle bracket and the full path. And then we press enter and we get the command being executed and we get hello world. Now a major benefit of using files is that we can run many commands. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put dv and I'm going to put k after hello world. And let me just save it. If I run this in WinDebug, it's going to run all three commands. So it's going to run the hello world first, then it's going to run dv, finally it's going to run k. Now running a lot of commands is really really powerful, but we can enhance it by passing in parameters. To pass in a parameter, the syntax is a bit weird. What we will do is we will have two dollar signs over here, and then we will put in an, a right angle bracket, the alphabet A, and the parameter will be at the back. Like in this case, we'll pass in the parameter 1, 2, 3 to the script. Now, there's a lot of ways to run a script with parameters. I will put a link in the description below on a table of all the permutations, but for now, we will use this technique. To consume the parameter, it becomes the argument 1. The first parameter over here becomes argument 1. The next parameter becomes argument 2. The third parameter becomes argument 3 is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let me just run this script really quick. So if I run it with just one parameter like this, I get that the first parameter is filled up and the other two will just say arc2 and arc3. Similarly, if I run the script with more parameters like 456 and 789, I will get that arc2 and arc3 is filled up with the parameters 456 and 789. With parameters, we can enhance the script by using if statements. So if statements in WinDebug have a syntax that looks like this. You have a dot if, which is the if statement, and then you have a bracket where this is the expression to be evaluated. In this case, what I've done is I put the if statement to be dereference arg1. These are curly braces over here. And if the value is equal to f, then this if statement will be true. And so for the true part, I'm just going to put a dv inside. Let's go ahead and run this. So I'll save my script. And if I run with no parameters over here, nothing happens because the if statement is in error. By not passing in a parameter, I get a syntax error. So let's run this again, but this time I'll pass in an f and it will actually run dv. There are ways to check for errors in the script, but I didn't want to use that for this video because it's a bit more complex putting in all those slashes and slash d's in order to check for errors. So for now, we'll just accept that if we don't pass in a parameter and use it, uh, we will end up with an error in an if statement. There is also a technique to declare variables within the script. What we can do is we can call r and we can give it a variable name and assign it to a parameter. In this case, I can declare t0 is equivalent to arg1. This also means I can replace arg1 with t0 wherever it is used. 
in the if statement, it is actually a bit simpler because I can just use t0 directly because I don't have to dereference arg1. I am not sure why the syntax is like this, but it does make it a bit easier if we use variables. So let's go ahead and run this. So if I run this with the f, I get dv. And as usual, if I run it with, with some other alphabet here, it will just skip over the if statement and I'll only get the hello world. Also notice that the hello world still has a T0 at the back. Uh, this is because it's a quirk in Windybug where some of the commands don't dereference properly. So if I put back arg1 for the hello world, this would work. So let me just run that. And there we are, we get hello world E. I often use scripts for the more complex debugging as it is very tedious to be typing all the complex commands all the time. So I actually keep a lot of scripts in which I've already figured out some complex way of analyzing some memory dump or some application. And then I just run the script instead of me typing out all the complex commands. I find that the scripts are really easy to use. And you can also use JavaScript, which I will make a video in the future. I'm just more accustomed to just using the native WinDebug commands. But it is possible to use JavaScript as well. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you have used scripting in WinDebug. And a gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon and give a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.